How's it going guys, Vabov here from GN Tech and welcome to a camera comparison between the Huawei Mate 30 Pro and the Huawei P30 Pro. So they've been in the market for quite some time now, so they're running on relatively fresh and updated software. So I think that plays a big part in knowing what the big differences between the Mate 30 Pro and the P30 Pro really are. So I'm recording this on the front facing cameras on both of these smartphones at 1080p resolution. So this gives you an idea of the video quality, the video stabilization, as well as the audio that's being picked up by both of these smartphones. But with that being said, I'm now gonna move into the primary camera where you're going to be taking a look at the photos and the videos that both of these smartphones are able to capture and judging which phone does the better job and what the differences really are. Before getting to the photos, let's run down both the phone's camera specifications. The Mate 30 Pro and the P30 Pro from Huawei both have quad camera setups with slight tweaks here and there, as both phones represent different flagship lineups from the company. The front camera too is slightly different, so let's see how these differences stack up. With this first picture, my aim was to test detailing and how the camera handles light on a subject. In certain places, it looks like the Mate 30 Pro has more detail, like when you look at the green leaves, but on the tree bark, the P30 Pro has more visible details. Both phones give you an option to turn on AI mode, and with it on, I think the better picture is from the P30 Pro. This isn't because of the level of detail this brings out, but also because the AI mode is less aggressive. On the Mate 30 Pro, the vibrant color tones, especially the greens and reds, look a bit too saturated. Next, we'll move to this image. It's quite difficult to call a clear winner here as both photos are identical. There's the slightest shift in white balance on the P30 Pro, but it's pretty negligible. With AI mode turned on, you can see the effect on the blues of the sky primarily. With the P30 Pro, it retains that warmth of the sun and the Mate 30 Pro aggressively cools the image. You can also say that the P30 Pro keeps more detail in the picture, especially on that footbridge in the foreground. In another case, the results are again pretty identical. This rose, for example, is well exposed with nice softness to the background, highlighting the camera's hardware on both phones. The saturated look from the Mate 30 Pro is more pleasing to the eye here, and definitely with AI mode, the Mate 30 Pro does a better job with balance in the overall photo. Now away from AI in this photo, the Mate 30 Pro is better. Its dynamic range processing is better, allowing the phone to capture more foreground detail. Not just that, the sharpness in the picture is also better, although both phones get color tones and the mood of the picture quite spot on. Up next is this one, where in terms of detail, both phones are again identical, so this seems to be a bit of a trend. But just for some context, this was taken with the sunset behind me. So if you look at colors, the P30 Pro is picking up the warmer colors of the sunset a bit better than the cooler tones that the Mate 30 Pro is picking up. The difference in color tones is again emphasized here, but I threw this picture in more to look at the difference in the ultra wide angle cameras of both phones. As you can see, the quality of the ultra wide angle camera to me is not that impressive from the Mate 30 Pro. You also notice that it doesn't have as wide of a field of view as the P30 Pro, so this may be something to do with the new lens the Mate 30 Pro comes with, but I seem to prefer the result from the P30 Pro. Another thing you should note is that because of this change in lens, the Mate 30 Pro does not support super macro mode. So in this case, the P30 Pro clearly has an advantage and this is something you should keep in mind. Now we move to testing the zoom capabilities of both phones. The Mate 30 Pro has a 3x optical lens, while the P30 Pro has a 5x optical one, so the result should be interesting. At 2x zoom, I think both photos are identical, but at 3x zoom, you can see the Mate 30 Pro with a slight advantage in detail. Moving to the 5x zoom, the P30 Pro's optical capabilities do not quite overshadow the Mate 30 Pro's 5x zoom, and both phones are holding their own, just with the slight differences in color profiles. To me, at 10x zoom, the photo from the Mate 30 Pro looks better, but that may be due to how the phone handles color. This is now at 20 times zoom where detailing remains about the same and now at 30 times zoom and I think you have got to give it to Huawei for even making this possible on either phone. The P30 Pro can go further up to 50 times zoom, which is something the Mate 30 Pro cannot do. With that being said, now we move to portraits. Between these, the Mate 30 Pro seems to have more balance in the photo, especially with how it controls skin tones. Neither has any glaring edge detection issues and both phones support 2 times portraits, where I think the detail from the P30 Pro is better, but if I was to choose based on color processing, I'd give it to the Mate 30 Pro. Flipping over to selfies, it's clear that the P30 Pro has more detail over the Mate 30 Pro. I like how the P30 Pro handled the photo, although with portrait mode turned on, the P30 Pro struggles with its background and blows it out. 
The Mate 30 Pro on the other hand is able to retain this well and this could be due to the extra 3D sensor that is found on the Mate 30 Pro which isn't on the P30 Pro. I think this is a good place to transition over to nighttime photos. It's clear that the P30 Pro has the advantage here on all fronts. With night mode, there's a clear difference between the images and to me the more balanced picture is from the Mate 30 Pro. I just think the yellow from the P30 Pro is a bit too vibrant with night mode and feels over processed while the Mate 30 Pro's image goes for that right mood. Next up is this Christmas tree where again, without night mode, I'd give it to the P30 Pro. And here, even with night mode enabled, I do feel like the P30 Pro is doing the better job offering this sharper image. Lastly, we have this image where if you look at the ground, the detailing on the Mate 30 Pro is better. So here, without night mode, the Mate 30 Pro is actually doing a better job. But with night mode enabled, both pictures look identical to one another, barring the slight differences in the detail on the ground. I thought I would also give the ultra wide lenses a try at night, which again points out how the wider field of view on the P30 Pro is more convenient. In terms of detailing, I'd give it to the P30 Pro, and with night mode, I think both phones do quite a good job with sharpness, and the choice comes down to how you prefer the colors on the photo. But I tend to like the P30 Pro's image in this case. For nighttime selfies, again, I do think the P30 Pro is the clear winner and even offers a much better night mode for the selfie camera. The Mate 30 Pro though is better when it comes to portrait selfies at night. Switching to video, both phones can do 960 FPS slow motion video but I feel like the Mate 30 Pro looks better and to take it further, the Mate 30 Pro can even do 7680 FPS video, making it the first phone ever to support this although it does take a toll on video quality. Now onto regular video, we'll start with 1080p footage. To me, the contrast in detail from the P30 Pro, if you look at the complex things like the trees and shrubs, is better. But the stability shown from the Mate 30 Pro is better than the P30 Pro's. In ultra wide angle footage, I do feel like the Mate 30 Pro does well with dynamic range and stabilization. Although detail and quality wise, the P30 Pro is doing a better job and the field of view is greater. When running, the trend continues where the Mate 30 Pro's overall stabilization of video footage is more favorable using the ultra wide angle lens as well. But with the standard angle lens, the stabilization on both phones is quite bad, but if I was to choose one, I'd have to go with the P30 Pro's footage when running at 1080p. 4K footage now, when walking, the Mate 30 Pro maintains its stability and this time I'd say it's a bit closer in terms of detail. The Mate 30 Pro also captures dynamic range well and with the ultra wide angle lens in this case, the Mate 30 Pro actually does a great job not only with stabilization but detail as well. And to be honest, it's quite impressive. When running, I like how the Mate 30 Pro performs but with the standard angle lens, running samples from both phones are not up to the mark. For the first time on any Huawei phone, it is possible to record 4K 60 FPS footage, which is very impressive. I'd give it to the Mate 30 Pro again for video quality and stabilization here despite the higher FPS count compared to the P30 Pro. Using the ultra wide angle lens for the same now when running, the Mate 30 Pro is again the clear winner and I think the overall message you can get from video at least is that the Mate 30 Pro has improved drastically when it comes to both dynamic range processing and video stabilization. Nighttime video between both phones at 1080p is pretty similar if you ask me but the ultra wide angle camera at night has noticeably more detail from the Mate 30 Pro which is an improvement. 4K video to me again is pretty much identical but when using the ultra wide angle lens for 4K the Mate 30 Pro has the clear advantage. Again, you can record 4K 60fps at night and the Mate 30 Pro is doing the better job in this case. So that's about it for this video. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments and make sure to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching, this was Vabhav and I'll see you in the next one. Adios!